Cool. So let's uh, let's get to the featured artist for the night. John, thanks for hanging out with us for a little while and getting your shot set up. Everybody, welcome Jonathan Vautour from Edmonton, Canada. And he's a 21-year-old singer-songwriter and <laughs> shingler. He has shingles, everybody. I mean, he owns shingles. Wait, he puts shingles really? on. What do you do? <laughs> hey, Terry, it's Terry Bradshaw here? What, what's the roof going on? Anyway, so, John, this is the part of the show where we're going to watch your video, Everything's About to Change. This is where I want you to give your sort of elevator pitch. Say you're in an elevator with somebody, and they're like, oh, John, you do music. Great. What's it like? You tell us what your music's like. Like, give us just a little snippet about Everything's About to Change, and then we're going to come back and get deeper with Dave. Yep. Awesome. Sounds great. So, tell us about your song, Everything's About to <laughs> Oh, I thought you were going to play the clip first. I like, um, yeah, I mean, Everything's About to Change is sort of, uh, it's actually, it's funny, it's kind of a conclusion song to uh, my first single, uh, which was Monday. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a positive outlook on realizing, you know, maybe you're not where you want to be, but you, you feel like everything's about to pop and uh, you're, you're, you're going to get where you want to go. Cool. So, what kind of music, what's your music like? Just give us a little quick spiel on that, too. Uh, yeah, how would I, you I would, define your own genre? Yeah, I would. I would. I, there was a point where I would describe myself as folk music, but now I think I would kind of refer to myself more as like uh, indie rock, I guess. Yeah, I would say that's a good good thing. Okay, so we're gonna listen to everything's about to change and watch the video, and then we're gonna come back deep with Dave. Everybody, show yep. us the yacht. Let us know what you think. We'll be right back. Yes. Get it, Rob? Yeah. I've had a real string of bad luck lately Feels like my whole world is going crazy and I I don't know why You know those days when nothing's working You try so hard but it's just not going how Wake me up when the nightmares are done I've got a feeling everything will be okay I've got a feeling everything's about to change Things never seem to come out my way It's like I'm stuck in a downpour lately and I can't get dry It's hard to keep pushing forward When it feels like you're getting nowhere fast Like I miss my chance Deeper with Dave, deeper with Dave, oh yeah. Sponsored by... All right, so if you go to Jonathan's website, which is johnstunes.ca, J-O-N-S-T-U-N-E-S.ca, you will find that he his faith is very important to him. It's clear that his... Faith is like a guiding light of his life and his career and his music, and uh, and he's open about that, and that's great. Uh, but the question here that I will start, I have a few questions. I want to kind of go along this little like uh, this little pattern here, which is: Do you consider yourself a Christian rock artist? Um. Well, I mean, what what is a Christian rock artist, right? I. I, I'm a Christian and I'm a, I'm a rock artist, right? But but I don't I don't I don't play music specifically for Christians, right? I play music that you know for for people that want to hear the music and and I, I truthfully write you know what what I feel I need to write, but uh, I, I I don't I don't get off on pushing you know personal beliefs on other people because I think that's what they should be is personal beliefs, right? 
Understood. Okay, so I, I I had this podcast a few years ago called The Fundamental Escape, and it was an exploration of spirituality. That was that's what it was about. It was just people from all different beliefs came in. And we didn't do that many, maybe 25, 30 episodes, but we had people like, you know, Jane Moore. We had um, a lot of like Christian rock artists came on the show. We had Milo mm-hmm. Yiannopoulos. We had, uh, and I can't remember, we had some like uh, Paul Young who wrote The Shack. Like we had some big names on it. But right. the hot topic with the Christian rock artists in the discussion, it was like an hour show, was the decision of, lyrical content and how it kind of steered their career in many ways. So Mm -hmm. I I wanted to have this discussion with you because like this stuff's really important. Like the, this decision, it's somewhat of a debate, but it's a major decision because whether you um, write your lyrics, like about your faith and your belief, which is so important to you, like whether you put them in the lyrics, like God, Jesus, Bible verses and everything, or Mm -hmm. to speak in metaphor, that's a, that's a major decision because if you are like speaking with content of your faith and all your lyrics, what can happen is you get labeled a Christian rock artist and you stay there for years. And some artist, the artist that I interviewed did not want to be in that label yet. Their faith was, imp- it was a really interesting discussion. So where just, what are your thoughts on that? Okay. Well, I guess I got, I got two thoughts for you. Um, the first one is, I mean, if you, if you look at the man himself, you know, Jesus Christ, like yes. that man never said anything literal. Everything was a proverb, right? That's right. how he taught people. So there's nothing wrong with metaphors, proverbs, and and uh, and, uh, and and using words to 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 speak to a bigger meaning. I don't think at all. And and the other thing that I would say is, you know, uh, going back to some of my some of my uh, childhood heroes, uh, DC Talk. I don't really care if they label me a Jesus freak. Um, like, like that's that's perfectly fine by me. I don't I don't intend to to write music to convert people. I intend to write music to be honest about what's inside of me. And if some of that happens to be you know um, faith driven stuff, that's perfectly fine. But but the intention is not to to um, you know tell people this is what you should believe. It's it's a reflection of what I believe and what I feel to be true. And I think the only other thing I would say is that. I think I, I've noticed, because I, I play in lots of very, well, I'd say I play in more public venues than I do um, faith-based venues, like more, more, more bars than churches, you know, more coffee shops than um, Christian music festivals or anything like that. Uh, if, if anything, I, I've definitely noticed a lot more people who are more secular take a real interest in the faith-based message, like a message of hope or whatever, you want to call it, um, than, than Christians ever do, which is an interesting. Really? Re- oh, absolutely. Inter- absolutely. Okay. That is interesting. It, that is very interesting. But yeah, I mean, everything else is said is very well said. I, I appreciate all that stuff. Uh, um, but you, I, you must have thought about this stuff before, or are you oh, just yeah. kind of going with the flow and not just like, well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. There, there was a day when, um, when, when I wanted to be, you know, what would be considered a worship artist or whatever. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's but, nothing wrong with that either, but, no, but, no, but it's a very, not. it's a very like tight community and it, it can become your career. You will have very supportive fans that will support everything you do, but, but you're going to be in this, like a smaller bubble than what you could be. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just, it, there is no right or wrong. I want yeah. to make that clear. See, see it, for yeah. me, it was less of a conscious choice, though, and it was more what I deemed to write. You know what I mean? More, it was more about when I started writing music. It was more about um, reflecting the insides, like writing my personality, my emotion, all that, like true stories or or true stories about people I knew or whatever. And lots of that, you know, faith is a big part of my life. So a lot of that is is uh, related to to my my beliefs and things like that. But but it's less of a message to other people about my faith and more, you know, sort of a, I guess you could say the cliche, like a window into my soul. Right. Um, <laughs> that yeah. was good. That was good. Well, let, let's move on to just like the, your sound and everything. Uh, sure. I definitely want to know where you see yourself going. Um, Cause there's, you know, again, there's some different paths you could take here. So 
the names that come to mind obviously are like you know like Sean Mendez and uh, Jason Mraz. Mm-hmm. So I think of Jason Mraz a lot because I remember his early albums. They're you know more acoustic driven, kind of dry, uh, really not much you know production going on behind him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he veered off into this like Caribbean influence, like just this you know kind of in left field. Yet I think he won a Grammy like for that right. album if if i remember correctly yeah. and it was some yeah. of his best work so i'm curious like what maybe some different like world sounds or some different like genres that are maybe starting to kind of pull you into a different flavor uh i mean before before i started playing like like again I, the sound that i have now is very indie rock right um but when i when i started acoustic playing, based i mean it, yeah, like it's yeah. there's well, a lot of pl- yeah, a lot of that has to do with how I write, right? Like, because I, I I sit right here and I play my guitar and I write like that, right? Um, and and uh, I don't I don't do a lot of uh, I I, t- I tend to keep my music more stripped back because I, I I don't know I have I feel like it's more honest that way, you know? Um, and and I don't have a, a huge you know six piece band or anything that I take with me when I when I tour, right? Uh, if anything, I have two or three guys, a guy that plays a guitar, a cajon, but that could change, man. I mean, oh, that, that's a choice. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it, it could change. Um, but, but to this point, it's, it's pretty much been relegated on the fact that I, I haven't had that opportunity, I suppose. Uh, I, I wouldn't be against moving towards like a fuller sound with like playing more with a big band and stuff like that. Um, but, but I haven't found the right people to work with to make that a reality either. So that's the other thing is good help is hard to find, I guess. <laughs> uh, but is, is a vision starting to kind of materialize though, in terms of like different types of sounds? Like, are you I, I definitely, do you I hear definitely, distortion at times? Like, do you hear the, just anything? Like, do you hear different genres starting to bleed into your sound? I, I definitely, I definitely can see, see myself playing a, a bit of a, uh, a lot more of a, a, a darker, um, more rich sound like like with a with a band kind of thing more go, going more the rock route i suppose um but uh yeah i i, I don't i don't I'm, I'm not a worldly influenced artist i don't i don't listen to a lot of americano or a lot of latin or anything like that right a lot of a lot of my influences tend to be pretty um pretty vanilla i suppose i i don't know so. <laughs> <laughs> you're young i mean you're you're 21 i want the people to know you're like young yeah. guy so oh yeah no there's always room for growth i, I wouldn't rule yeah. it out right but yeah well okay so you are you are are you touring regularly is it just kind of like regional or are you like dipping down the u.s and everything uh that's that's the plan hopefully in the in the near future yeah uh like like i'm booked for the next uh four or five months right now. I got a couple of shows a month across Western Canada, uh, BC and Alberta and uh, a little bit, I think I got one or two booked in Saskatchewan and stuff, but yeah, hopefully the plan, the plan is this, this year and into next year to move down South into the States, hopefully. Yeah, man, you got to. I, yeah. I, oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So where, I mean, I mentioned the website, so where else can people find you and is, where's all your music? Where, where can they listen? Oh yeah, well, um, you can you can go to the Jonathan Votour Facebook page. Uh, there's there's lots of good stuff there. The music videos and stuff are there. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at John underscore Votour, J O N underscore Votour, and um, yeah, and then the website's got links to everything. That's super easy. At, you know, John's Tunes dot ca. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, man. Pleasure chatting with you, man. I appreciate you opening up about that stuff. Uh, well, thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate that. Yeah.